I'm Chris Morin with HVAC Pro Blog, and this week I want to talk about how you know if your duct work is sized correctly for your new replacement system. Without further ado, here's the training. All right, I bet before you clicked on this video, you were thinking, great, another lesson on a duct calculator. Well, I'm taking a different direction here because I know most of the industry either doesn't know how to use a duct calculator correctly or picks an incorrect rule of thumb for friction rate. Yeah, there are some rules that you can follow to understand your current situation, and instead of using grandpappy's old thumb, why don't we measure something? When inspecting ducts on a system replacement that's still operational, verifying duct static and measuring the volume of air or CFM is the simplest way to understand the current situation. For measuring static pressure, it's one of the easiest ways to know if you have too much airflow or undersized ducts based on total external static pressure of the existing duct system. This procedure should be completed on every maintenance, no AC or heat calls, and new startups. By verifying the static pressure is close to design and monitoring system static during site visits, you can see things like A coils becoming restricted even though it's buried in the plenum. Understanding where to make the correct measurement and using an accurate digital manometer is the key to this first step. The recommended maximum total external static pressure for those old PSC motors is about 0.5 inches of water column. If you have an X13 or variable speed ECM, it's more like 0.7 on the max side. All right, let's talk about measuring airflow. Although many ways are approved to measure airflow per the quality installation guidelines from ACA and Energy Star, I consider only two being repeatable and trustworthy. The first is the simplest, as long as you have a system blower chart, but you can Google almost anything these days, right? Since you already measured total external static pressure of the system, referring to the blower chart and the speed for which the blower was set will provide one of the most accurate ways to measure airflow. The second is using a device called a true flow plate. This plate measures a cross section of the airflow for you and shows the resulting pressure on a dual input manometer. Then they provide a chart with the plate that will give you the resulting CFM. If you're within 10% of your desired airflow with your existing or replacement system and your static pressure is close to your design, then the trunk ducts are sized correctly. So example number one, let's say I wanna replace the existing three ton heat pump with a similar size. If I measured 0.25 inches of water column in the supply, negative 0.2 in the return, the total would be 0.45 inches of water column. And when I measured airflow, either with the blower chart or the true flow plate, it was 1,090 CFM. Since my static pressure is below my maximum of 0.7 with the new ECM system, and my volume of air is within 10% of my desired CFM if I wanted 1,200 for a three ton system, then I know the trunk sizes are gonna work. Right? All right, let me throw example number two at you. Let's say I wanna replace the existing oversized four ton heat pump with a smaller, more accurately sized three ton heat pump. I measured the static pressure in the supply, it was 0.3. Measuring the return, it was negative 0.45 and the total was 0.75. And when I measured airflow, it was 1200 CFM. Since my static pressure is at my maximum recommended with a desired nominal 1200 CFM airflow for the new smaller system, I would try and select my heat pump using more like 350 CFM per ton instead of the 400 CFM per ton in order to reduce the total static pressure. And there's actually a fan law, which is fan law number two, that will give you what the new static pressure will be, which I will be covering in many webinars and other training opportunities like replacing gas furnaces. Next, let's talk about duct imbalances and sizing. Notice in those two examples, I used both the supply and return static pressures that were relatively close. A properly designed duct system will actually prove this to be true. In fact, due to velocity targets in the return ducts being slightly lower, the return ducts tend to be slightly larger than the system supply ducts. This usually results in a system that's more like example number one, what happens when you measure static pressure and there's a drastic imbalance though? In example number three, let's say I wanna replace the existing furnace with a like size and efficiency and airflow, very simple. My supply static pressure was just 0.1 inches of water column, but I had negative 0.65 in the return. The total static pressure was 0.75 and I measured 1000 CFM. This probably goes without saying, but it should be obvious we have a restricted return duct system. Keep in mind, when corrected, the supply static pressure will actually go up. There can be several reasons for this, but the typical corrections include a combination of installing a less restrictive air filter or increasing the size and the number of the returns. Or maybe you just use a better low equivalent length fitting like a sweeping 90 elbow instead of a bullhead tee. 
right? All right, let me give you example number four. Let's say I wanna replace the existing furnace with a like size and efficiency and airflow, and I measured 0.6 on the supply duct and negative 0.2 on the return. So my total static pressure was 0.8, and my CFM was just 900 CFM in this example. A restricted supply system, obviously, could be from many things and not always an undersized trunk, although this is usually the culprit. You could increase the size of the supply trunk. It could be very cost prohibitive. You might use a less restrictive refrigerant coil for the AC or a heat pump add-on. You might use a better low equivalent length fitting, like taking out that bullhead T. You could verify that duct liner isn't loose inside of the trunk if there's any duct liner in there. I've seen this. And verify that the dampers for the supply runs are open. People do crazy things in their homes sometimes. If you're not able to measure static pressure and airflow, then you're less likely to be sure the new system will work within reason. At this point, I used to still ditch the old rules of thumb with my duct calculator for verifying trunks and the number of supply runs, you know, using the calculated friction rate on what I can see at the site. Also, verifying the existing system meets the rules of duct design, the rules of flexible duct design and good practices for duct system design are always a good idea. If you want to verify the volume or CFM of the air to each room will be correct, there's no way around a full system design process. You'll need to complete a room by room load calculation and a complete duct sizing worksheet in order to do so. Thanks for joining me this week at HVAC Pro Blog, where we provide advice for residential system design, quality installation, and system diagnosis. I'll see you soon.